All right, guys, I've never really been one to feel comfortable talking on video or videoing myself or anything like that. I tend to get weird. I feel weird right now, but I'm half, I'm not really halfway. I'm in the middle of working on my truck. It's a 1996 Chevrolet C1500. Uh, I got the truck about three and a half, four years ago from the original owner, uh, he passed away and left it to his son-in-law or sold it to his son-in-law and he didn't really drive it that much. I ended up getting it for a really good deal from him. It had like 200 and like 20, 210,000 miles on the body when I got it. No rust, uh, which is rare to find on these trucks. Uh, it had the 305 in it from the factory. The guy that I bought it from had the had a 350 swapped into it. Apparently, you know, it's not stock. I don't know what that means. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but it has the 4L60E, and I put a uh, Eaton Positrek rear end uh, locker or whatever in it uh, to get better traction in the snow is what I did it for, just to get around better. Uh, but I've been, I bought it. It had some aftermarket wheels on it and factory size tires. So a 29 inch tire diameter is what these trucks came with from the factory, the two wheel drive ones anyway. Uh, I put a four six drop on it, some 20 by eight and a half wheels with a 29 inch tire to keep my speedometer and everything correct. Uh, liked that, messed around with that for a couple years built a eight inch lift for the front of it. I uh, used four inch drop spindles, three inch springs, uh, which I know comes to seven, but it ended up being eight. Some upper, or I built some uh, custom upper control arms and whatnot. And that, I just didn't really like that. So right now I'm working on lowering it again. Uh, but I put a Beltec, uh bolt in notch with a DJM flip kit. And I didn't really like the notch, how it went in. I ended up welding it in as well, but it wasn't deep enough. Uh, I would end up bottoming out because I still, you know, pull my boat, pull tractor, whatever around with my truck. Uh, so I ended up the bolt in notch in it and welded in it as well, just because I tend to overbuild everything that I build just because I get nervous or scared that it's going to break. But the bolt in notch was three inches from factory frame. So from the factory frame, the bottom of it, it took it up three inches, but what would end up happening is when I'd hit a big bump or pull in a trailer or something, it would bottom out and just beat the shit out of the bump stops. So I was like, well, it's, it is what it is. Uh, you know, it's already in there. So, but this time I already had the bed off. The bed's super easy to take off these trucks. If the bolts aren't rusted in, there's, uh, eight factory, um, uh, bed bolts. I think they're super easy to get to. It's an 18 millimeter socket. You just get under there and take them off. Super easy. Uh, but I already had the bed off and I was doing all this and I, I wanted to fix the, the, the problems that I had with the truck the first time I did it. Cause I drove it for like a year, year and a half lowered. Uh, and I just, there was a couple things that I didn't like about the lowering kit that I used and had some problems with it. So I was like, well, I'm just going to improve over the issues that I have, you know, lowering it back down now. And so what I did, I actually is, went through and I ended up building a notch around these notches and cutting these out. So these, these bolted in, I welded them in. And this is the bump stop that comes on them with the Beltec whatever notch. So this is, a, this is the factory bump stop. Uh, not, not a big difference. Building my own notch and taking that one out, I went from three inches over under the factory frame height uh, with the bolt in notch to now I'm at nine inches. It's a little excessive, it gives me more room than I need. And I am going to have to cut the bed out, unfortunately, but I'm going to build a false floor in it. So I still have a usable bed. Uh, but this allows me now, if, if I wanted to put bags on it or anything, but I have plenty of room to put a good bump stop in it for when I'm pulling trailers or pulling boats or hauling gravel or my four wheeler to go hunting or anything that I'm doing. Uh, so this just allowed me to have more usable suspension travel. So this is how I ended up using it or doing it. I used two by four eighth inch box tubing. Uh, I cut this one, I cut them at a 45, welded these flat into it, and then used a uh, scab plate just to cover that uh, joint, just to give more strength. 
And then I tried to use factory holes to rosette weld onto, onto the actual notch. But what I did is I built all this, and I wish it wasn't so wide, but it had to be that wide because I had to cut out the other notch that I already had in it. But it's welded all the way around as far around as I could get it. Uh, but with the lowering kit, you end up having the factory shock mounts would have went here and then you would have had a drop down shock bracket on the bottom which hangs super low. So what I'm working on right now is building these new shock brackets that are gonna weld to this top support bar to hold the shock. So the shock's fully extended right now. These are factory shocks. I just took the factory mount off the top of them. So these are gonna weld in mm, probably somewhere about like that. Uh, to, so I don't have to use the drop down brackets on the bottom to still have a decent uh, height clearance on the bottom to the ground. Like I said, I'm working on these, the shock mounts. I know this video is gonna be kind of scattered out. I'm gonna do my best to edit it. I've never really made videos before, a few back when I was younger, shooting bows and whatnot, but nothing that I was really serious about. I don't really know why I decided to make a video randomly in the middle of doing all this, but I just really enjoy watching this stuff on YouTube and I wish there was more of it. So I figured eh, if I wish there was more of it, I'll put some on it. My, I'll put some on YouTube myself or whatever I'm gonna do with this. I don't even know if I'm gonna upload it. I'm just gonna see how it turns out. Uh, but anyway, I'm in the middle of making these, so I'm going to get the other one built and welded on, or try to get them welded on. Uh, I don't know if I can get them welded on without, by myself. I really need to put the shock, because I have I built these a certain length for the shock to be midway through its compression stroke, even though it's not going to go low enough to bottom out or come up high enough to bottom out at the top. But I just wanted it to be in the middle position of its compression stroke, just because that's the way that it should be done. Uh, so I'm going to work on getting the other one built, all tacked on, fully welded, and then some bracing in between the notch. Before I get into finishing that other uh, shock tabs and welding them on, I'm actually going to show you how I fixed my drive shaft angle issue. I just remembered it. Like I said, these are going to be scattered until I learn how to structure them better and actually edit and put things where I want it. Right now, I'm just trying to videotape them in order and put them in, so I'm going to show you that. All right, so all I did was took a piece of square tubing and then to get the height correct, I uh, welded this plate on top of it. But to figure out my height, uh, I used washers and just kept stacking them in until I got the height that I wanted. Uh, and then just looked around in my garage and tried to find something that was the correct thickness. Ended up having to weld this plate on there. I TIG welded it. TIG welded it so hopefully it would look a little better but uh how the how these are held in is this uh this plat or this rubber bushing actually because this is a two-piece drive shaft is held in by sitting on whatever it's on so you can't just use two individual spacers you have to have one uh i don't know if i have enough room up here when it starts moving if not i'll just clearance it but i wanted to get it as high as i could so my drive shaft would be at a better angle, I got the pinion angle set the best that I could with that kit. Uh, and so I just wanted my drive shaft to be a little better angle because before I had a little humming going down the interstate and all my U-joints and everything are good. So I just wanted to make sure and I got a little crazy on greasing it there. I actually lost that grease seal so I just pack it full and that's what all that's from. But I'm not buying a whole new yoke to get that grease seal because I can't, I haven't been able to find just the seal. Okay, so now we're actually going to get to what I said we were going to get to and finish building the shock mounting tabs Get those welded on and then if I have enough time today before I got to go to sleep and go to work I'm going to try and add in a little bit of my bracing Okay, so don't mind the messy bench. I'm not good at cleaning up. It's an organized mess. I usually know where things are I'll clean it up eventually so here is the first mounting bracket that I made. I originally was just gonna use these tabs that are actually welded to this to mount it, but the angles weren't gonna work out and I didn't have a piece of bigger plate still to make a full bracket out of here. Uh, so what I ended up doing is these are actually 
the drop down brackets that I was telling you about. So this would bolt in the factory location. Then you have a bolt that goes up through here to keep it from rotating so that your shock would, would mount here and that mounts where the factory location is. So all I did was take the brackets that I already have beveled out for the tubing, welded them on, rosette welded the inside of them, plated that to make it look a little better because I didn't really like the way that it was looking at all. I was just gonna go buy a piece of bigger plate steel to make my own fully. But once this gets welded on, then I'll plate the top of this so it will look like all one bracket uh, that's meant to be made together. It may not be the best looking thing in the world. I actually think they look decent. Uh, I was just trying to use what I had and not have to go buy a bunch of stuff. But uh, how I do this is so here is the bracket, or here's this piece of two inch stock just so I don't have to do a lot of cutting. Uh, Originally, I wanted my tabs to be four inches long from the bevel to the end of it where the bolt would be, you know, around in here. So it'd be at like three and a half. Uh, so all, all I do, take a hole saw bit that matches the diameter of your tubing, figure out where you need it. So that's where I need it. I just marked that as a reference for you to see uh, what I was talking about. So we're just going to drill that and then it's going to have two bevels. So then we're just, then we'll cut it here, you know, somewhere, wherever four inches is, so then we have two tabs. So all I do for setup on the drill press is I find center of my, whatever I'm drilling. See, I've got it marked there, so that's gonna hit right there. And then for this particular thing, I actually put a piece of wood underneath of it. So when the drill bit goes through, it can stay guided, and then I'm not gonna drill into my bed and I don't have to try and clamp it in a vise because this is actually just a little wider than, than the material that we're drilling through. So it's just gonna drill into this and not hurt anything. I got it clamped down, so we're gonna get to drilling. All right, so we got that drilled, makes quite a mess. Use WD-40, makes it a lot easier drilling through that because that's a lot of material to remove. Then you get left with pretty much your own washer. These are actually really handy to keep around. Uh, sometimes if I'm using a bigger one, you can actually keep these, lop them off at the bottom, drill a bigger hole and use them as tie down mounts or anything on a trailer, gussets, whatever you wanna do. Okay, so now I've got the brackets cut out. I'm about to finish grinding them, getting them prepped up to weld onto the drop down brackets and then we're gonna get them on the truck. All right, I've got the bracket all tacked together where I want it. So now we're just gonna burn it in. All right, so we got this one all finished up all welded up, ready to go on the truck. All right, guys, I feel like I've rambled on enough in this video. I know I've had diarrhea of the mouth a few times. I really don't know what I'm doing. I just really, really like watching this kind of content, and it's the kind of content that I would like to put out because everything that I've learned to an extent about working on vehicles and fabricating and stuff has just been from watching other people do it on YouTube and getting ideas when I'm going to do something, I can say, hey, this person did it this way. I wonder if I can do it that way or build it this way. And just getting ideas from looking at different stuff. So I just encourage you to get out there, watch videos, learn how to do it. If you're scared of doing it, hey, I was too. I was nervous to cut my frame in half, but so far it's going good. I don't think it's gonna break in half. Uh, I guess we'll find out, but I'm going to make a part two of putting the shock tabs on the vehicle and finishing up the bracing. I just feel like this video is getting too long to add it into this one. And plus I got to run to town and get some bolts anyway. So you'll probably see me in the same clothes cause I'm probably going to video it today and keep going, but I'm not going to include it in this video, but thanks for watching. I guess there'll be a second one. Comment down below. Uh, if you liked watching this, if I could do anything different. Uh, just, you know, any criticisms, good criticism, I guess. Uh, and I appreciate you guys for watching.